years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Sorry. Hello, everybody. This is The Ramble. This is Alex Bennett. And uh, we go until midnight tonight. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, out to, out to a place that is outside of Las Vegas. Where is that again? Boulder City, right? Yes, sir. And we've go- Boulder City, Nevada. Yeah, and the we- home of ninety nine percent Mormon and one Jew. And one Jew, and that happens to be Stephen Kravitz, who we're talking to. Hi, Steve. Hi, Alex. How are you? Good. How are you? You know, I last time I was supposed to interview you, I uh, didn't get an answer, and then I called you and left a message, and then you called me and said, uh, "I'm I'm in the loony bin." Yeah. Well, you know. It gets to be a drag when they know you by name. <laughs> when they say, hi, how you doing? Good to see you again. Yeah, how you doing, Stephen? Give, give me your shoelaces. <laughs> what happened? If you can hang yourself with shoelaces, yeah. you should be allowed to do it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's pretty inventive. Yeah, you got a very thin neck, I would imagine. Um <laughs> <laughs> What the, Actually, these days, yeah. I'm skin and bone with my grandpa's belly, mm-hmm. <laughs> with your grand- and, and these scrawny little legs, and it looks like a, and I have a inflated little belly, like I said, and my butt is now hanging at my knees, but I still think I'm 22. Well, maybe you're funnier looking that way. I don't know. Oh, you you, you want to, you know, here, here's a story I just thought of. Yeah. When I was playing Vegas, I was playing Harris. And Slayton was down the road. So yeah. Slayton comes up to hang out, and, you know, we're talking. And as he's leaving, he says, you know what, Kravitz? You were, be- you were funnier on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, that certainly is a lot of, uh, what can I call it? That, that gives you the incentive to quit, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and you know... It came from a place of love. We know that about Bobby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know something, though? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know anybody that is funny or on drugs. You know, they think they are. Yeah. They imagine they are, but they really right. aren't. You know? No, no. And I'll tell you the difference is when you can actually hear them laughing, your timing improves. Yes, well, also, I mean, people don't realize that in comedy, one of the major talents and abilities you have to have is what's called timing. You don't just tell right. a joke. You tell it in a way that you're spacing the pauses and everything in order to get just the right laugh that you want out of people. And when you're high, you lose that ability. You know, you yeah, don't... Yeah, and then, you know, you're mixing it with Chad to Daniels while you're on stage. You know, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. Right. I mean... That, I, that, I, I went from stand-up comedy to sit-down comedy till I'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, anyway, so this last event, what happened? Did you just kind of, like, feel you needed to go somewhere and be protected? No, I, um... Was at my doctor's for my regular monthly, you know, lab work and all that shit. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, man, you do not look good. You look gray. And he took me right into the hospital and he said, don't worry about the dog, Rosie. I'll take care of her. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but you went to Reno, right? I think he called me and he said you were in Reno. Who, who said I was in Reno? I don't know. I, I, that's what I've heard. I mean, that's what you said, or at least I got the impression you were in Reno. But where were you? Where was this hospital? Uh, the hospital was um, in Henderson. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I think, you know, Pearl just did a week up in at the Lab Factory in Reno. So maybe, well, like, throughout our career, we're mixed up for each other, which uh, I don't get at all. Yeah. But, you know, I love Pearl, but yeah. you know what I mean? We're, we're different styles. Yeah. 
Yeah. So anyway, anyway, so you 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 go to the hospital. He sends you up to the hospital, and and what is the right. reason? He's. I mean, you're gray, but that does that indicate you're nuts? I mean, uh, you know, I I don't. No, that indicates that I'm toxic. But you're. Oh, I care. Okay. All right. Right. Yeah. So they they brought me into the um, loony house, or as I like to call it, sleepaway camp. Yeah. And. For the first two and a half weeks, I have no memory. They just flushed everything out of my body, and then they introduced some different psych meds, and mm-hmm. they seem to be working just fine. Yeah. In fact, the tremors I had in my hands, uh-huh. it went away when we changed the medication. So this was a you know, I hear about this all the time, okay, from, from various people. It, it, it doesn't necessarily happen with, uh, with somebody who goes a little crazy off of this stuff. This is people who just don't get better or get worse that the meds were not proper. They had to readjust the meds. So, right, right. It, you and, know. And, and the thing is, when you're a psych patient, you're a guinea pig. Me and you could walk into the same doctor's office at the same time, both had being bipolar, type 1, and they give you a yellow pill, and they give me a yellow pill. We both take the pills. You walk outside, the clouds had parted, you're singing Chitty Chitty Bang Bang for no apparent reason, yeah. and I'm in the ICU. Wow. Wow. So really, it has to do with the individual's uh, uh, chemical makeup, maybe? You know? That's right. And, and I had been on that last medication for a few years, and it just kept getting worse. So I finally gave in and said, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's do this. Yeah. And the new medication, you feeling good? Yes, the tremors are gone. I actually had a cup of coffee. Yeah. The the worst part, though, Alex, was I'd been off cigarettes for 10 months, and I had to make a decision. You know, do I do A, which is, you know, go back to what I was, mm-hmm. or or I forgot what I was talking about. You're Alex, ta- I'm getting old. I know. You're talking about cigarettes. About, you- oh, oh, anyway, so I had a choice to make. You know, drugs, alcohol, coffee, cigarettes, and I took the the last one. I started smoking again. Yeah, um, you know, I wish you weren't doing that. You know, I you know I quit smoking. What I quit smoking, I think, before you knew me. Just when I went to the Quake uh, in San Francisco. Right. Yeah, I never. I've never known you to be a smoker. Yeah, I stopped smoking, and uh, that was I don't know forty years ago, maybe longer, and. Uh, uh, I think it was the wisest decision I ever made because now I, all I have is prostate cancer. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a trade-off. Well, no, One the problem. The, other. the problem was uh, I was asked, "Did your prostate smoke?" And I uh, said, uh, no, <laughs> "Yes." Um, so, but and, no, I, you know, I, I, I'm going through this whole radiation deal and everything, but I'm going to be fine. You know, it's not uh, my age; it's not. It doesn't kill you. They always say, uh, oh, and, I, and you, know, you know, Alex, we're really hard people to kill when you think about it. What we've been through in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, yeah. we were just maniacs. Yeah, well, I don't, I, was I a maniac? I don't remember if I was a maniac. I no, I, I remember you being more like a, um, a father figure to us. Like you, you, were, you, were, you were to us like Bill Graham was to rock and roll. Well, that's nice of you to say, but. You know, that's a, well, Alex, you, you don't realize what a big deal it was when you became a regular on your show. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I never, I never thought of it in those terms, you know. But I do know that there were certain people that I didn't bring back because uh, I, I didn't think they worked. You know, I mean, just because you're right. funny doesn't mean you work on on the radio show. Radio is a different medium than anything else, and a lot of you guys really knew you were good at it, knew how to work radio, okay? So when you right. came on as a guest, I never had a problem, you know? I never had to corral you. I never had to, you know, you never... It, it, it was the difference between somebody who would come on the show and hold a conversation and somebody on who would come on the show and do material. And yeah, I, that's, that's like, you know, I, I'd be on the road and my middle act would say, you know, let's get lunch, we get lunch, and he's doing his material, and I'm saying, dude... Dude, yeah. If you want to do your material, go sit at another table. Yeah. Or if you want to go to a museum or a ball game, we'll do that. But shut the fuck up when it comes to the comedy shit. Yeah. And and so 
you know, I just wanted people who were naturally funny, even without material. You know, the material would right. come just because they opened their mouth and said something, and they were funny. And um, uh, so then there were other people who, as I say, those people who would just do material. I'm trying to remember who was the who was the comic that he he was gay and he uh, he died and he won the comedy competition. I'm trying to remember. Oh, 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 oh. Jim Samuels. Jim Samuels. Yeah, I I love Jim. Jim's a great guy. I never had anything against Jim, but I, right. I I never I stopped having him on my show because he just wasn't a good guest. Now right. he went out and won the comedy competition. He had a great act. He was very funny. But when he would come on my show, he would do material, and it didn't. It you know you're talking about something like uh, you know uh, what do you think about the Yankees? And he would suddenly come up with a joke about something else because it was something out of his act. And, right, and, right, and, right. And it was very difficult to do that. So there were some comedians who I just, I had on once and I, I didn't like them anymore. There was, uh, and, they, and they, they actually came to hate me, you know, because I wouldn't have them on. And, and well, I didn't know there was people that, I know people were very anxious when they were asked to do the show for their first time. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anybody that wasn't a little anxious because you didn't know what you were walking into. Well, I think I made it pretty easy for them. You know, I don't think I oh, ever... Oh, yeah, oh, um, Alex, I, I, yeah. I, I, no, I don't even know how I got invited on your show. I think somebody dragged me with them. It might have been Billy J. You know the thing that first got me about you and why I liked you on the show? It's because you've got a funny voice, you know? <laughs> and and, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I was, I'm doing radio. I like funny voices. You know, they, they cut across. You know, and that's right. why I immediately took a liking to you. Plus, you were funny. Oh, there was that, wasn't there? <laughs> there was that slight other thing, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't know if you me and uh, Will did, did, did your show on uh, the day after my birthday. Mm -hmm. And Will and I had spent the evening talking politics till the sun came up. And we went right to your show. Mm-hmm. And the first thing out of our mouth was, can anybody get us some beer? <laughs> yeah. So uh, that, yeah. That's, how we, that's how we opened your show. And the thing is, anything goes within certain parameters. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, when you do radio, it's one kind of comedy. When you do stand-up, it's another. And when you write comedy, I think that's the one that's the hardest because you can't hear their voice. Well, I mean, do you, uh, is your method of doing comedy to write it down and then do it, or or did no. you, did you just? I've never written a word. So you, you I started you, earning my living, Alex, in 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 June of eighty one. Yeah, and I've yet to write a joke. So really, all of your jokes come because you're on stage, you're doing some stuff you already know works, and then all of a sudden you say something right. and it's funny, so it gets added to the act, right? Right, right, yeah. right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Oh, I like and that. Sometimes a, a joke only works once. Because you, if, if you do it the first time, it just rocks the house. And the next night you get crickets. Yeah. Well, I know I know people that, that write their jokes. Um, no. Slayton actually had people writing jokes for him uh, initially. I don't mm -hmm. think he, I think he does his own stuff now. But in the beginning, I'm he sure. had he had a couple of really great writers who wrote his act for him, uh, and uh, and and you find that hard to believe because Slayton is such a natural, great comic, right? That you right. don't think of that material as having been written, uh, and but there are people who can do written material and are very good at it, just terrific. Right, at it. And, and Alex, Alex, I have a skeleton that I work around. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a certain opening that lets me know if I can go left or right with this audience. You know, so so there's there's little uh, PowerPoints along the way. Yeah. The first time I headlined the punchline, the very first time, right? Yeah. So it's a big deal. And I'm headlining, and I get up there, and I'm just rocking. I'm killing. And I'm thinking, i got to be 40 minutes into this set. And I look at my watch, five minutes has gone by. <laughs> I got on my knees in front of the audience. In the prayer position, I looked up and I said, God, I need another 40. <laughs> and the set went great. Yeah. The set went great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and any time I would do a TV set, 
you know, I tried writing it down, writing down what I wanted to do, and I would always have a bad set. If I went up there with just my brain, I would have a good set. I'll tell you, you know, uh, uh, there were comedians who 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 did TV, and you really you've got to come up, you got to come up what three minutes, five minutes, maybe be- at best, and you right. you've got to somehow it it. Part of the job of a comic, especially if the audience has never seen him before, is to let in the first part of your act to get the audience to know what world you're bringing them into. You get, you right. know what I'm talking right. about? Like you, you got a crazy way of looking at things, and now they've got to understand that kind of crazy. So you're introducing yourself, and then right. You, then and, and also, I, I always felt like it was. When they come, come off stage, didn't do well, and they go that thing over their head. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, if you're that fucking smart, man, make them, give them the background information to make the joke funny. Yeah, well, the thing is that, that uh, in what I say about people introducing themselves, it's that you're, you're creating your own world when you're doing a comedy act. You know, your that, own. That's right. After, and, after, after three minutes to yeah, five minutes, yeah. they've forgotten about the rest of the comics. Yeah, and they have to know what world, what your world is. Now, I know some people that do it with one line. They've got one joke at the very beginning, and everybody says, okay, I understand this guy. Right. You know, and others. Yeah, I, I, used, to, I used to open up with, so I'm pumping this nun. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You know, and then, but the thing is that when you're doing TV, you got to let them know who you are in the first twenty seconds. First two seconds. Yeah. First twenty. First uh, a second to twenty. That's yeah. all you get. Yeah. And then you can do the rest of your act, and they laugh. Uh, and right. th- there are funny comics I know who have just absolutely failed on TV. I think we know the greatest failure that we can remember was Will Durst on Letterman. Yes. Uh, just yes. well, that that was a choice between his principles and what they expected him to fit into, like a mold. Yeah, and they didn't want him to do any political comedy, and that's what Will is. Yeah, well, he he also took um, he also took advice from the producer, who said, "Do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that." Okay, so he went on and did exactly what the producer said. And he absolutely tanked. I mean, the audience were like, it was like crickets out there, you know. And and Will is a good comic. He shouldn't have tanked. And if he was allowed right. to use his own instincts, he would have done okay. Now, on the other hand... And now, I learned a valuable lesson from Will about mm-hmm. doing uh, spots on television. I was co-hosting the Rick D show. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. I was co-hosting it for a week. And we had Will on. And at this point, the, the show was dead. They could only fill half the room. So they, And it was all high school kids, mm-hmm. probably from special ed. Mm-hmm. And Will did not do well in the studio, but he did it like he was killing. You know what I mean? His mm-hmm. timing was right on that. He, he never said, oh, that joke sucked. Oh, I'm sorry about it. You know, he just kept going. And mm-hmm. when they sweetened it and, uh, you know, went on the air that night, he killed. He rocked. Because the jokes were all good. Now you know who killed on TV. Absolutely, was perfect on TV. Was Bubbles. Uh, oh yeah. He did Letterman, and did one of I consider the most perfect sets I ever saw. And, and he, he he had a good example of establishing who you are. Like in the very beginning, I can't remember what the first line was he used. I think it was something like somebody uh, stole my identity, and now he has no life. That and that that yeah. set the tone. For what he, who he was, he said, "Here I am, right. and this is who I am." Right. Plus the fact, like a lot of times, Alex, you know, I'd wear a tank top or a muscle shirt, uh, whatever, because I have tattoos, and it would set a tone before I even open my mouth. Right, right. But what what happened with yes. what happened with Bubs is he also looked great in a close up. Well, you could see those expressions happen? on his face, and. It worked. It just absolutely worked. The trouble with Bubs is he waited another 20 years to go back on the Letterman show. Yeah, I, mean, I remember all of that. He, yeah. he was asked to come back, which is, you know, gold. And so what you do is you immediately go back to San Francisco. You work for, on another five minutes. You give the producer a call. And, and six months later, you're back on Letterman. No, he waited right. 20 years. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, 
Uh, yeah, I, I don't think you that, would. That, hmm? You know, Bubs and I went, we did our first set back to back at the zoo. And the only reason I know the date is because of Bubs, March 3rd, 1981. Wow. Wow. I think I went on second and he went on third or the other way around. But I only know the date because Bubs knows the date of everything. Oh, d- yeah. He's, he's Rain Man where that's concerned. I mean, yeah. Rain Man who drives. Yeah. I don't know. I, you know. I can't remember. I can't. Sometimes I can't remember my wife's name. Uh, you know, I can't remember. Sometimes dates. I can't remember mine. I actually, but I had to go to Bubs. I, I did this thing called Life in the Passing Lane, in which in in half hour episodes for sixty seven episodes, I told the entire history of my life, and and a lot of the dates and the and what happened first. You know, when I did this and when I did that, I I I had completely. I would completely go into a brain freeze on and I would call Bubs and say what was the date that I did blah 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 and then did I do this after I did that and he had it all in his head yeah you know well, I'll give you another example I'm up in Edmonton now I've been shooting Black Scorpion from March until December mm-hmm. and in January I go up to Edmonton yeah. and I can't remember shit and these people have been really good, to, and they've seen me for like the last ten years. So I brought one waitress to the right and one wait, waitress to the left, and I said, "Okay, what comes next?" <laughs> and they would tell me the act, and then I would, everything went along fine. But it was just yeah. really cool to have them come up and do my act for me. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, Bub, Bubs is very good at that. If you need to find out, when was the first time I went uh, on stage at blah, 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 he will actually be able to tell you if he was there. And uh, oh, I, yeah. he, he can tell me the first day he was ever on my show. Uh, you know, I mean, it was it was, it was amazing. He's just amazing and resource that way. But as I say, some comedians who are great bomb on TV, others do great on TV who you don't think would. I mean, you wouldn't, you'd think Bubbles would be a crapshoot, okay? Right. But he's perfect for television. Just perfect. And and yet, you know... But you, you, you know, television is, is weird because of uh, language. And I, I was doing NBC and I was doing Fox and NBC, I was doing a joke about uh, Jew hunting in, in Louisiana. And... The first uh, station said, no, you can do the last part, but you can't do the first part. And then Fox said, you can do the first part, but you can't... Well, you can do the second part, but you can't do the... Wait a minute. Uh, well, you can yeah, do the I, first I, part, but you can't do the second part. I get what you're there saying. There we go. Yeah. yeah sensibilities, you know. It's, uh, it, that's, that's the other crapshoot with television, is you guys had to train... Uh, had to... Uh, adjust your act to the, what they felt was right or wrong. You know, the classic, the classic was Letterman, who later, years later, uh, after he was dead, apologized to, uh, to Bill Hicks's mother for having cut Bill Hicks out of the show. Oh, I think one of the first weeks that Letterman was on, Hicks did his act. Hicks went back to the hotel room. He called me the next day and told me the story. He said... And I went back to the hotel room saying to myself, that's the best set I've ever had on Letterman because it was the first time I was really me. And he gets a call from the producer, uh, and uh, the producer says, sorry, we're not going to run it. And they cut him out of the show, and what they did is in his place, they put an interview that was done for a test show when they were getting ready to do this. You know how they will will do a, a test show for an hour to, uh, to run the show through, and they had somebody from their staff they interviewed. They put his interview in there, and and it really hurt Bill because he felt it was a great set. And years later, after he was dead, Letterman, who kept feeling guilty about that because it was during the first weeks of him at, at CBS, and he just didn't want to do anything wrong, and he was afraid maybe the material was too edgy or something like that. Right. Brought in Hicks's mother and said, I, "I I know Bill is dead, but I want to apologize to you for him, uh, for uh, and it was an amazing moment for uh, not running his set because I was too uh, cowardly because it was my first weeks at CBS and I was afraid of what it might do." He said, "But now we're going to run it," and he ran the set. 
on the show. You know, right? And it was Bill right. Hicks's uh, set from uh, from uh, uh, the um, um, Letterman show uh, that had been cut. And uh, so there's another example of what happens to guys when they go on TV. You know, they can be the best right. there is and still have that happen. I'll give you another example. Don't go out and buy new clothes for that sh- for that uh, set because there was somebody who wanted to get into the competition so bad, and he finally got in. He went out and bought all new clothes and got up on stage, and it wasn't him. You know what I mean? It was yeah. just off because he's conscious of his clothes. This. So whenever I did TV or whatever, I just wore what I'm wearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, I just looked at the clock, and we've run out of time. Boy, this has been good. I love talking to you. You know, I just, oh, I, I just, I, I think, I think you should, you should think about being my uh, voiceover agent. Oh yeah, right. I can't even get voiceovers myself. Okay, how am I going to be an well, agent for somebody else? I don't know how you get those kind of jobs. You don't get those kind of jobs anymore. Uh, they, they, yeah. They're, they're few and far between. If they don't hire a movie star to do the voiceover, they go out to Des Moines and hire somebody to do the voiceover who's non-union and don't pay him a lot of money. Right, yeah, right, that, right. That, Ain't no residuals. Yeah, I mean, I when I was working at, it, we, we'll go a little bit over here, when I was working at Sirius XM, quite a few of the guys there were have been doing voiceovers, and one of them who came, became a good friend of mine, I said, okay, how do I get into the voiceover thing? It's always eluded me, and I've never been able to really do it. And he said, there's no business there anymore. He said, there's a handful of people who do it, and those who aren't a handful of people who do it, are being you know, done in Des Moines, Iowa, because it's cheap for them to do it there and to hire the talent there. And, uh, you know, it's it's just there's no there's no work there, really. I mean, he says, if you want to try, I'll give you a couple of hints. But... A right-to-work state? Hmm? When they go out to the, the, to the Midwest or they go out to the Southwest or Southeast, yeah. and it's a right to work state, which means there's no union. Right, exactly. So, you know, that's the way the business is now. Otherwise, I'd be doing voiceovers because I still got a fairly good voice, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, but, oh, yeah. You got a great voice. Yeah. I mean, I, I've done very few voiceovers in my time. Uh, and uh, part of that is I just didn't know how to do them. Uh, oh, or uh, I'm going to run a little over here. I love telling this story. I, I went in to do an audition. You go in in New York. They would call me every now and then and say, Alex Bennett, we're doing a spot for so-and-so. Would you like to come in and audition for it? This is when I was first working in New York. And I said, oh, okay, sure. Uh, and you would go in and you'd be sitting there and there were a whole bunch of people waiting, you know, and then some guy would go up and say, I'm here for the audition. And they'd say, what is your name? And he goes, Orson Welles, you know, and you go, well, I better leave right now, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, I was doing this thing for, oh God, uh, it was a, a breath mint. And um, they auditioned me, and I was sitting there, and they said, okay, read the copy. And I read the copy, and the copy reads, uh, Mar- Marjorie knows a lot about skinny knits. But what she doesn't know is she has ho hum mouth. <laughs> and I start reading this thing, and when I get to ho hum mouth, I start breaking up laughing. Right. And they say, Mr. Bennett, is there a problem? I said, and I'll go, let me get it, try it again. And I go, Marjorie knows a lot about skinny knits, but what she doesn't know is she has ho hum mouth. And I start breaking up again. And they go, are you having a problem, Mr. Bennett? And I looked at them and I said, this is the most trite piece of shit I've ever read in my life. And they said, next. (laughs) Quick audition story and then 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 we'll we'll fetch. The next episode will be Kravitz and Bennett fetch. Yeah. Just fetch. Either talk about the jobs they didn't get. Go ahead. Tell me the story. so I, I, go, I go on this audition. It's for McDonald's. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the producers, you know, they tape it and everything, and they didn't want me McDonald's. And the guy said to them, "Go frame by frame. Tell me a frame that's not funny. Show me a frame that's not funny." So what? I got a McDonald's commercial. Wow. But it's so weird for a producer to go to bat for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think he saw the value in it. Okay. He and saw I'm- a paycheck. 
And I bet you got a good paycheck out of a McDonald's commercial because that thing, every time it played, you get some money, you know. So. That, that same thing with the milk commercial. Yeah. Yeah. What milk commercial did you do? They wrote a book about those milk commercials. Huh? They wrote a book about those got milk commercials. Oh, really? Did you do a got milk commercial? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. I did a good, and I'm in the book. And I'm in the book. And you're in the book. Well, we'll we'll save that story for next time. Is this, is this going to air Tuesday? Uh, I think probably Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, right now is Tuesday if I'm running it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Oh, no, I just want to get people to listen. Oh, it, it, I'll, it'll be up online, so uh, they can okay. they can go to my Facebook page or they can go to YouTube to Gabnet. Or uh, go to Alec, look up Alex Bennett on YouTube, and yeah. they'll be able to find. will be in the first uh, first part of the show. Anyway, great talking to you, Steve. God, you I know, you Alex, know. I, you some, I was so looking forward to this. So I lo- looking forward. I love you dearly, and I I just you know I I I I, I wish the best for you, and I you great to talk to you because you're just funny, and we'll do it again soon. I love you much. Talk to you soon, buddy. Okay, stick around. I want to talk to you after we're through doing the interview. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's okay. Stephen Kravitz. Still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, there we go. Okay. Hey, sorry for the, uh, for the uh, uh, mixed start, but for some reason, my audio on one of my channels muted itself. I, I, who, who knows why this stuff happens? I'm not going to try and figure it out, and I don't want to waste your time with it. So anyway, how are how you doing? Okay, I'm doing okay, somewhat, you know. Had my last uh, uh, radiation yesterday. I'm feeling okay today, but I'm a little on the, on the uh, edgy side and a little on the fatigue side, but at least that part of the radiation is over with. Uh, and, um, other than that, I'm just, I'm just pissed at the world right now. So, you know, I, I really won't get into it. It has to do with the, um, the whole legal situation that we've gotten ourselves into. I gotta tell you something. The only people in this world that make money are lawyers. Okay. Um, we got a bill. I hate to tell you this. We got a bill this month. For nineteen thousand dollars. Now, do we have that money? Yeah. Do we want to put out that kind of money? No. So now this whole thing with going to court is approaching. I think it's around ninety thousand dollars now, but let's say it's approaching a hundred thousand. If we win this case. We won't see a hundred thousand. Okay, so now the question is whether we cut bait and run and say to hell with it. We'll go move into another apartment or something. We'll move into a, a one bedroom apartment in some hovel in some terrible neighborhood. <laughs> well, we are kind of in a terrible neighborhood anyway. Uh, or we can just, you know, we can just roll the dice and play this thing out. But no matter what happens, we're never going to see our money back again. I mean, we'll get something back again, I'm sure. You know, uh, we could possibly win it. Uh, I think it's a good shot. We have a good shot at winning it. But even if we win it, we then have to, like, get the money from the people we win it from. And then we have to have our lawyers spend more time trying to get the money, which costs us more money in lawyers. And, and you know, if I had known, and I think if Marjorie had known, that it was going to go this far, okay, and cost us this much, I don't think we would have done it. You know, I think we would have just said, bye-bye, we'll go find some other place to live, all right? But no, we thought, hey, this is, you know, this will be solved in a couple of in a little while, and it only cost us five thousand dollars the first time we went to the lawyer, and it's, we started the whole thing, so that, that would be fine. But we didn't think it was going to go this far. 
it was going to get this crazy. And, and, and you know, it, it isn't even, okay, it, you know, we have one more set of, uh, it isn't even the, 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 the lawyer in court that's costing us the money. It's the lawyer not in court trying to study the case. Uh, and I, I just feel that, you know, uh, we, we're running out of money, to be honest with you, you know, or money that we want to spend. You know, I just uh, emptied out about ten grand out of my um, my uh, uh, retirement fund, so that I so that we could uh, pay this month's bill, and she's paying for part of it on her home equity loan, and uh, you know, it's not like we're made of money, and the courts don't recognize this either because the courts go ahead, and they just move as slowly as is humanly possible. Uh, I mean, this this court case, number one, it should have been over four or five years ago, but even now in the courtroom, it should go faster. This is going to turn into a about an eight-day trial? Are you kidding me? Come on. And then we're involved in the middle of it and we're the only people in the whole case who haven't been charged with any malfeasance. In other words, nobody's saying, hey, the, Be the, Be the Bennett stole from us, okay? And we want our money returned. Or the Bennett's cheated us out of something. No, it's just this one asshole who is the guy who rented us the apartment uh, under the guise that he could rent the apartment, which he couldn't. And um, he, um, and I'm not telling you anything out of court that, you know, I've told you this story before. Uh, uh, we just didn't, you know, uh, uh, we didn't do any, he dragged us into it by suing us along with the landlord. So now we have to go out and defend ourselves. So, okay, I will put out $5,000. Okay, we got ten. Okay, well, it's up to 20, it's up to 30. Before you know it, it's up to $90,000? Are you kidding me? For this kind of pissant case? And, you know, and, and where is a judge in the middle of all of this saying, you know, certain people in this scenario don't have as much money as other people in the scenario, and for their benefit, we have to get this thing done faster and more efficiently. You know, this could have been solved a long time ago. It just needed for somebody to say, yeah, okay, fine. You know, we're all right. But anyway, so I'm really pissed about that. And I told, wrote my lawyer and told him that we're thinking of cutting bait and running. Because, you know, this is just, unless he can give us a good reason not to. And then he didn't write me back. So, you know, what the hell. Uh, you know, so I, am I pissed? Oh, God. I couldn't. I couldn't sleep last night. I'm probably gonna have to take another sleep, uh, another Xanax tonight to put me to sleep, when usually I don't need that. And uh, all this happened when I was at least celebrating that I had finished my uh, five uh, treatments of uh, of radiation, uh, and uh, now in about two weeks uh, I'm going in for the uh, the seeds which uh, will keep, probably keep me off the air for a couple of days. Well, a few more things may keep me off the air for a couple of days. Um, I'm going to say something. i got to say something here, and i I, I got to be really totally 100% honest about it. Last Wednesday, we did a show here, and I walked away from it saying, you know, this is why I do this show. I really had a good time tonight. I, I felt that the show was good. We had some good topics. We talked about a lot of good stuff, and it was wonderful. And I've walked away really feeling very positive about what we've created here, and I felt good about it. And I don't know, we, we didn't have a huge um, um, panel, but we had a, 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 a sufficient-sized one, and I was very happy with it. Friday night was an absolute clusterfuck. When I left the show that night, I went, why am I doing this? What is the reason for doing this show? 
Now, granted, we had a lot of great people on the show. I mean, Rob, I love dearly. He's been a friend to the network. He's been a friend to me, and I, I loved him dearly. And, of course, we always like Jeff, but he doesn't, doesn't say much. Um, but there were certain people, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to point fingers, who just took the show off the show off the rails, made it very difficult for me to to um, um, keep going. And I then listened to Jack's show right after mine. And I don't know, it must have been some kind of disease that was hitting this network, but he seemed to be having the same problems. Uh, there were a couple of people on his show who were so interruptive uh, that it was, uh, it was ridiculous. Now, what this has to do with and I, I've got to say this, is that some people, and maybe even know who you are, you know, don't respect the other people on the citizen panel. They just don't. They don't realize that there are other people there who want to get their two cents worth in, and uh, they, 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 they don't want to be frustrated in their attempts to, to give out with their opinion. And I think what's happened in, in, with the citizen panel is certain people don't respect or listen to what's going on. And uh, I, uh, it, 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 when that happens, I'm at my wit's end to try and solve it, even though I try to tamp them down and try and corral them and, and whatever. Uh, and, they, and, and at least one, if not a couple of people, made it unbearable the other night. Uh, and I walked away going, what do I do this for? And then I called Jack after his show, and he said, I said, what are you doing your show for? He says, after tonight, I don't know, because he felt the same thing that I had felt. Um, you know, this whole concept of the citizen panel is, I think, a great idea. The only problem with it is that it's almost impossible for us to um, do it when we don't have the full cooperation of everybody, and um, and the and and people having respect for other people because it is a group discussion. People have to have respect for other people. We had one person actually leave the show the other night and decide not to come back because he heard what was going on. That's how upset he was by by the show and I wrote him back and well, it, was, it was Josh Wheeler and I wrote Josh back and I said I totally agree with you I said I felt the same way I don't blame you for not coming back uh, it's important folks that if you're going to be part of the citizen panel that a you listen when other people are talking and let them say what they have to say and then uh, you know, when you're finished, hopefully someone else will have waited uh, to see what you had to say, and 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 uh, it will be very nice. But I can't teach good manners, and I can't teach respect for other people. But just remember that all the people on the show have an opinion. Some of them I don't agree with. Some of them I do agree with. But it, for the most part, they have opinions that they personally think are valid, and quite frankly, would like to get them out without having somebody suddenly jump in and say something. And then there's always the person, and I won't say who, who will suddenly take the show off the rails by suddenly, you're, you're talking about one thing, and they, call, they suddenly say, and by the way, did you hear blah, 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 and you're not finished with that other subject. The idea of being a member of the citizen panel is to join in on a discussion. It's not an interview. It's not a game. It's not a who's better than who kind of situation. It's a bunch of people sitting around kind of discussing with each other. And all I ask is that you be as civil with each other as, uh, as you would be in your own home with people you were talking to. And, and when they're talking, to suddenly listen to the fact that they're talking. But, you know, and, and some people don't, uh, I agree, have a problem because sometimes they're not listening using earphones. Uh, when you use earphones, you can hear sometimes when other people are jumping in. When you're doing Skype 
and you start talking, sometimes you can't hear when other people are talking, but it would be easier if you had earphones to do it with. But I was, I was very disappointed the other night, and I, I really, uh, at that point, was saying, I just emptied my trash. I, 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 kept, I kept saying to myself, why, why am I doing this? What, what's the reason for it? You know? I've got enough problems as it is already. I've got to deal with this prostate cancer thing. I've got the apartment thing. That's enough to give me grief. I'd like to come here and feel good about this show. I want the, the last thing that I have to feel bad about, the fact of this show, okay? I'd like to come in here and have this show kind of be my refuge. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, um, I, I love most of the people that, are, that they call our program. Gee, they're wonderful. They've been very supportive. I hope you continue to be supportive. But to other people, uh, have respect okay, for the people who are talking and listen to the conversation and meld into the conversation. Don't sit there at home thinking about what can I bring up to change the subject. No, you're not going to do anything to change the subject. We, the subject will change on its own naturally. So what am I saying here? What I'm saying here is if this doesn't get better, I'm just going to stop doing this. Okay, I've got other things to do. I can come up with new plans of what what to do with my uh, my presence on the internet, uh, and uh, what I may do. I think as as one thing on this show is if I feel that somebody is getting too disruptive, I'm going to say you're getting too disruptive, and thank you for calling, and then hang up on them. Okay. That that's that, um, that, that that that's going to be one of my new rules for me personally. Also, um, uh, sometimes if somebody has suddenly been constantly a bane of the existence of the show and they call, I'm just not going to answer the call. Okay, that's the way I'm going to control this thing. Let's see here. What what somebody's saying now? I have to go back and hear Friday's show. Hear what he's talking about. That's Tom Lou. Thank you, Tom. Uh, but anyway, uh, don't forget about your blood pressure, says he says. Charlie Wallace says, I couldn't even afford $900. Oh, well, we're talking about the lawyers there. Anyway, I love you too, Charlie. Don't, don't, don't take it personally against you at all, what I'm saying. Okay? Anyway, I'm going to open up the uh, Skype lines, and I hope tonight will be m far more pleasant than it was the other day for me. Let me see here. Where do I go? i got to find... Um, Skype. Oh, there we go. There's Skype. We open up Skype. Takes a little while. And um, let me see here. Come on. Uh, Skype. The, sometimes the first time you open up after you haven't done it for a couple of days, it takes it forever. Okay? It just bounces up and down in my dock on my Mac. Come on. Here we go. I think that's it. Yeah. That's got to be it. Okay. Uh, it's opening up. And now I can open up the... Uh, uh, here we go. Yeah. By the way, it looks like uh, Bernie is, uh, is close to winning in, uh, in New Hampshire, at least being ahead because they apportion out the delegates. Uh, and uh, let me see here. No, that's one I'm not going to answer. Okay. All right. All right. I'm not going to answer that call because that's one of the persons that have, have been annoying me. Ah, here comes Charlie. Good. Good for Charlie. Hello. Uh, let me see here. Wait till he comes into the picture here. Let me see if I, I have to get his picture before I can put him in my, my thing. Okay. Todd Moore. Okay. Hello, Todd. Uh, um, Charlie, are you there? Oh. Yeah, turn your camera on, Charlie. Uh, Tony Magno is calling. Okay. I, I, I think I'm... Oh, there we go. Okay, now I got Charlie. So I can open up Charlie. Let me see here. Charlie Wallace. There we go. And then there in the second place, we'll put... Uh, uh, let's see here. We'll put in Todd Moore. Okay, Todd Moore. He's our... Our uh, truck driver, if I if I if I remember correctly, uh, 
As you, you turn your camera on, Todd. Are you there, Todd? Todd, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, okay. Got it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, there you are. Okay, turn yourself sideways, would you, a bit, so that we can uh, uh, we can uh, get you. Let's see, Todd Moore. There we go. Okay, there's Todd. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, I got. Oh, then I better go get, do here, Charlie, and this. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, uh, uh, we. Uh, I see. Okay. I'm trying to get. There's Webhead. Okay. There's. Uh, uh, okay. Now we're all set up. Okay. There they are, ladies and gentlemen, the beginnings of a citizen panel. Uh, hello, Charlie. Hello. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes Jeff Stein. <laughs> wait a minute. I got to add Jeff to the whole thing, too, here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. We'll get that there, and we got we got him. I don't. He he's he's in a space that he was in last time. So there he is. There's there, Jeff's down in Miami, right? Jeff, oh, he's in Miami. Uh, almost in Miami. What do you mean almost? I'm in, Rush, I'm in uh, Georgia. Georgia. Oh, you. Yeah, I know. You always go to Atlanta and then on to on to uh, yeah. Yeah. onto the town. I absolutely hate. And Todd, are I you know. you in your truck tonight? Yes, I am. Um, I'm back in my old truck, as you can see with my lighting I got going on. Yeah, the lighting's and good. I left Georgia. I left Savannah. Oh. I came up North Carolina. Oh, you could have picked uh, Jeff up. Yeah, I could have picked him up. Yeah. You're a good driver, right? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. So anyway, and uh, Charlie, how are you? I'm doing pretty good on a cold night. Yeah, and uh, they're um, they're having a, a big to do there in uh, in uh, Vermont tonight or New Hampshire tonight. Um, uh, go Bernie! Yeah, go Bernie! Well, actually, he's he's uh, he, he's in front, but not you know. Buttigieg is right, smoking right up his ass. So you know, I mean, uh, Buttigieg is. Uh, is a factor now, okay? No matter which way you put it. The surprise of the night is Klobuchar. Uh, and I think people are st starting to take a liking to her. I don't, I don't know why, but they're starting to take a liking to her. As far as Elizabeth Warren is consider concerned, bye-bye. Uh, and Biden, uh, so long. Uh, Steyer, Come on, don't waste any more money. Spend it, give it to people who are going to be running, okay? And Yang, he just quit anyway. So it doesn't matter. And T Tulsi Gabbard, um, I don't know why she's still running, but, and that's the way it's going right now. And they got how many, what percentage in? They don't, I can't see here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, no, doesn't say, oh yeah, 86% of the polls are closed, so. That's the current uh, tally, as it were. Uh, so, uh, how are y'all doing, people? Good. You're good. Good. You're doing good. Okay. Terrific. Uh, hmm. Um, let me see here. And there's no Phil right now. I guess maybe he's mad at me now because of my speech I gave. Uh, I think so. Huh? I think so. Yeah, well. You know, you don't, shouldn't be mad at me. You just adjust your behavior, that's all. You know? Uh, I, all, all I was saying, do you disagree with me, guys? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, this is a discussion among a bunch of friends, so please have the courtesy that you would extend to anybody that you're having a discussion with. Yes, Todd? I'm uh, curious. So this happened on Friday? Yeah, it was just, it was just, did you feel it, Jeff? You were here. Did you feel it? Yeah, I saw a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, you didn't feel good either, did you? I came in a little late, so I yeah. didn't hear the whole. And I don't know if uh, if um, um, if uh, um, uh, Tony felt that way, but Tony's oblivious to everything anyway. So yeah. I kind of it's hard for me to judge who's mad and who's not. <laughs> That's the Italian family; they're always arguing. Alex, everybody hates everybody the next day. Really? Yeah, whatever. Is that what happens in an Italian family? <laughs> But my mother holds grudges though sometimes. Really, really. Yeah. yeah. But then she go. Yeah. 
So anyway, so I, you know, I, I, with all these other things that have been going on, I, I, you know, that the one place I come for a little refuge is this, you know, this is my supposed to be my good time. This is yeah. your, this is your, uh, yeah. What was Superman? This is your sanctuary, like Superman. Remember, uh, yeah, the, his fortress, fortress of solitude. solitude. Fortress you of have solitude. To be in the air yes. Right. 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 Only that's Superman, and it's up in up in uh, the North Pole, and it's freezing as hell up there. And I don't know why he would put it up there. If I were him, I'd maybe you know put my my uh, fortress of solitude, say, in a more tropical clime. Okay, maybe Hawaii or someplace like that. Yeah, who was raising their hand there? Who somebody was raising? Oh, that's me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff. No, I, I think uh, what you were uh, saying before was absolutely perfect and correct. And I, I agree with you. But I don't think it just happened on Friday. It happened many times before. Yeah, yeah. Is this, I think it finally got to me on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, and uh, uh, if I'm going to do this, I want it to be pleasant. I want, every, uh, you know, I, I want it to be a pleasant experience, not only for myself, but for everybody uh, in the room. Uh, and I, I don't think that that's too much to ask, okay? Uh, and and it, it also, it's very difficult on me because when I'm doing this, uh, I have to uh, uh, I have to make this work, okay? And so I have to be the ringmaster. And when everybody is in sync with each other and when everybody is cooperating with everybody else and allowing, you know, they hear somebody speaking, so they decide not to speak, you know, and then they jump in when they hear that it's time. They raise their hand. That's the way I recognize people. Uh, it becomes an easier job for me. But when all of a sudden everybody's talking over everybody else and I've got to separate everybody from everybody else, by the time I'm through and the show's over, I'm going... What the fuck did I do that for? You know? So that's, that's you know, everybody, if you consider me being too lazy, that I want to be lazy. I want this show to just be a bunch of people having a, a nice time talking to each other. That's all, you know. And I'm not accusing anybody of not making it that way. Although I think some people think it's them, so they're not calling tonight. But uh, I, I, I just, you know... And I and I and I appreciate the everybody. Um, um, somebody just wrote said, "Am I a, a problem too?" Uh, and uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> that person wrote, and I'm answering you. Yes, definitely. You were a major problem. So anyway, uh, where was I? So. Yeah. You know, so what do you guys think about what's going on in, uh, up up in? Uh, up in New Hampshire. I mean, uh, is this a good thing for the Democratic Party or is it a bad thing for the Democratic Party? I mean, I think Bernie's incapable of winning the presidency. I'm just saying that right out, you know, just totally incapable. But then again, so is uh, Warren, uh, so is uh, Biden. Uh, so is Steyer, so is Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang. Well, goodbye, Andrew. No more math, you know. Uh, um, but yes, Charlie. Yeah, I, I'm sorry to see Elizabeth not doing as well, because uh, uh, I like her too. But um, yeah, I, 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 I think any of the Democrats could win because Trump is getting so so cocky. He's been quoted on several shows talking about how he's going to cut Social Security and Medicare after after the election. And I think all the, the Democrats have to do, whoever gets the nomination, is just over and over again play those interviews and let, let everybody hear about how he's going to cut Social Security and Medicare, and, and he, he'll lose all 50 states. Well, you know, let's be honest. Uh, 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 the only thing that's keeping you alive uh, 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 Donald is the fact that old people don't fight back uh, because you keep going after old people and you keep talking about going after old people and I'm telling you uh, if, if you 
kill my Medicare. You're trying to kill me. Yep. So why shouldn't I feel the same about you? Okay, so we get a bunch of old people who have terminal cancer who can't get Medicare, mm -hmm. yeah. and we send them down to Washington with bombs strapped to their backs. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Don't fuck with old people who have nothing left to lose. You know? I mean, what is with this administration? What is with this guy that he is into the politics of cruelty? Oh, well, let's see. We're gonna we're gonna we're we're gonna drill for oil in the in the in the uh, in the national parks, and we're gonna do away with <coughs> so we're gonna do away with social security, and we're gonna do away with Medicare. So we go after old people, and uh, you know one thing after another. He just he must wake up in the morning and say, "What can I do to make everybody's life a little more miserable?" Yeah. You know. I mean, I I know. Uh, a cousin mm -hmm. who's in the fishing business mm -hmm. and she he's really out there trying to understand as to what's the the fish that we should be uh feeding and which would she be eating what and what we shouldn't be eating yeah because we're gonna ruin the, the world okay yeah right right this guy's gonna ruin the whole yeah, system. here's Ray Renati, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, hello. Minute. Here comes here comes Phil. Wait a minute. Let me let me find a space for Phil uh, as we go to Phil and uh, Phil Mayer, Phil Mayer, Phil Mayer. Scoot you know what I was going to ask? Does anybody know how the turnout was for the voting so far compared to four years ago? I, I think I, I don't know how it was compared to four years okay. ago. Counties yeah. uh, were on par. There's one county that had 50,000 that uh, hasn't uh, come out yet. I think it starts with an H, like Hamilton County or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I, I've been watching the thing except silently here uh, in, on my on my big screen. Uh, and there's Bernie uh, doing his best impression of da Larry David. Uh, <laughs> he looks like Larry. When Larry did that. Larry, <laughs> Larry does a great Bernie. When Larry does Bernie, it's so funny. It's ridiculous. Oh. He does a better. Huh? Did what did you say, he Ray? Does a Bernie the Trump than Bernie. He is a better Bernie than Bernie. Yeah. Bernie. <laughs> I was watching Curb. Did you see the one where Larry's walking around with the Make America Great hat on? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody yeah, wants to yeah, follow yeah. Them. It's like a people repellent, he said. Yeah, yeah. Right. People repellent. So anyway, but I mean, um, you know, I this is this came out about the way you would expect it to. Bernie, you know, took New Hampshire four years ago. So uh, if he didn't take it here, it would have been a real kick in the ass for him. Uh, I think I think Biden's gone, don't you? In fact, it's shocking how bad he's doing. The he, first did, he was doing so badly in New Hampshire that he left today for South Carolina. Yeah. What, what is Can that? I, I'm going to answer. Sorry, again. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah yes. What is Phil. that lady? Something, a pony, something. He got mad at some lady that asked him a question and uh, called, her, called her something. I think he thought he was being cute, but. but... A dog. Oh, faced, yeah. What, what a is dog faced <gasps> pony soldier. A dog-faced uh, pony. And then I saw the movie clip where they talk about that. It's from some uh, Tyrone Power movie in the 1940s where Tyrone Power was paying, playing a pony soldier and he ran into some Indians. Oh, I guess he got that right next to his record player. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. They're coming back, though. Yeah, but I, I just, uh, you know, I'll tell you the thing I don't like about Bernie. Uh, this weekend... I, I was, there were some Twitter posts uh, from Ber either Bernie people or people associated with Bernie or whatever that were going after uh, Buttigieg in, I think, a very unsavory way. Yeah. Okay? And I think that he's playing the game dirty. 
was was that the guy that went in and interviewed some Bernie workers? No, no, uh, no, no. But no. separately. No, 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 that had nothing to do with it. This was like, just like some things about Buttigieg and his association with getting his money from billionaires. You know, quite frankly, I don't care if he's getting money, his money from billionaires. If the billionaire happens to be a, a, a decent billionaire out there, why, why not? You know, there are, Bloomberg's a good example of a billionaire who really uh, doesn't, doesn't how, what's, how do I put it? is not going to use his influence to try and uh, influence a person who becomes president just because he gave them money. Does that make sense? No, that's... And, and what, it's, he's not doing anything wrong. I, mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking money from billionaires. You get it where you can get it so that you can run a campaign. Bernie gets it from individual donors because he's got these fanatics out there all willing to give $10 a piece or, or pennies from their penny loafers. And you know, there, you know, so that's where he gets his money. I, I just felt it was a bad shot for him to make. So he's getting it from billionaires. He's not getting it from Republican billionaires, you know. So, uh, I, I yes, uh, Ray. But speaking of billionaires, I heard an analyst today very convinced that it's going to be Bloomberg. You're breaking up a little bit win. there. Say that again. What? Eventually. You're, oh, uh, I heard an I heard an analyst today. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's yeah. going to be Bloomberg. I heard an analyst today talking about that. It's probably going to be Bloomberg as a candidate. Oh boy. Well, you know they say uh, uh, they say Buttigieg can't get the black vote, which I I don't know. I don't know about the two black guys in our uh, in our uh, here. Uh, in fact, let me ask that of of Todd. Todd. Uh, huh? Todd. Yeah, my man. Let, let me explain something to you. Okay. Um, a lot of um, a lot of black people are not really that fond of um, uh, Buttigieg, and um, the thing with the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we really want to see the United States? You know what I'm saying? All about oh, who got the most billions of dollars, like Trump and everybody else that is going to run for president, like Bloomberg and and everybody else. Well, uh, you know, and, and then. You, you, you kind of, you guys kind of, some of y'all, especially you, Alex, get N mad about my man, you know, Bernie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? About him with the with the petty loafer people. I'm a petty loafer person. Yeah, okay. Well, no, you know, and that's it's fine. But what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is Ber that's where Bernie can get his money. If there are billionaires out there willing to back Buttigieg, then he, there's nothing wrong with him taking their money. You know, true, uh, but you it know? tops off at a certain limit. They can't but take but so much. Oh, that's stops. that's right. There's a limit everybody can give. Yeah. Okay. So where's the other money going? Where's the what? The other money going. If you got all them billionaires backing up Buttigieg, where's the rest of all of the money going? See what I'm saying? If it tops off at a certain spot, mm -hmm. yeah. Then you got that many. What he say, like thirty something billionaires or something? I, I'm not a, I don't really remember exactly, but it was a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, they still can't give as individuals more than a certain amount of money. Uh, I don't know what it tops out at. I can't remember now. Uh, and there, and I don't think, and a lot of companies uh, spread their money around. Believe it or not, you know, yeah, uh, they, people people like Facebook gave money to Hillary, but they also gave money to Trump. Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah, that. they're they're hedging their bets against who, <laughs> who's who's going to win, and who they're going to have to curry the favor of, as it were. Uh, yeah, it's like who puts the most money yeah. on the person. That's the one they're most leaning to. But at the same time, they'll put a little bit on Hillary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see here. Let me see here. Bree is calling. Bree's got his hand up. No, wait a minute. Let me let me just uh, let me let me put, find Bree here first of all, and let's see here. Will we be able to see him today? Yes, we can see him today. But now we only see the bottom of his head as opposed to the whole head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello, hello there, Bree. You had you had your hand up. No. I he did. I did. Ray had his oh, hand. Oh, Ray had his hand. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, I, right. I just wanted to say, I mean, uh, the, the people, Bernie's whole argument is the people who are getting off millions of dollars, they're then in the, they're in the pocket of those people. They're going to have to serve them once they're in office. And Bernie's saying, I won't have anybody like that. Well, you know, but that's the right thing. But that's not true of everybody who gives you money, and that's not true of all billionaires. I mean, there are a lot of billionaires on the left who give their money because they believe in the cause and they want to support it, and uh, uh, they don't expect to be in the pockets of, of, of uh, of the candidate. Um, you know, I mean, if, if he's taking the money from uh, somebody like, like, what is that? What, what, what is that noise? Who, who had a noisy room? Um, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that if it's, if it's, um, wait, are we losing some people here? Wait a minute, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? We, oh, there we go. There, 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 there. Uh, we lost Jeff there. Um, uh, 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 what was I going to say? If it's somebody like Bloomberg, eventually, if he doesn't get the nomination, which I don't think is likely, is going to take his money and give a lot of it, or as much as he can of it, to uh, a Democratic can- whoever the Democratic candidate is. He said that already. Uh, I don't think you'd mind him taking, uh, Buttigieg taking money from Blum, Bloomberg, for instance, because you know where Bloomberg's heart is, you know? So uh, I don't think you'd mind him taking the money from, uh, well, let's see here. Uh, who would give it to him? Uh, the guy at Amazon, no, he's a right winger. Well, Bill Gates might. Uh, Bill Gates might, yeah. You know, I mean, there are a lot of billionaires who are just philanthropic and good guys, and, you know, you shouldn't worry about uh, Buttigieg having to be in their pocket. Yes, Phil? I thought uh, Bezos hated Trump. <laughs> well, Bezos hates Trump, but 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 he uh, he he doesn't love the Democrats either. He's, no. not, he's not a Democrat. No, he's conservative. He's always been an ardent conservative. Now, you know, which is, if he's an ardent conservative and Trump's pissed him off, that's not a good thing, you know? Um, uh, yes, anybody else have their hand up? I'm trying to look. Yeah, it, except that uh, Trump, yeah. uh, Trump uh, squashed a $10 billion contract for Bezos recently. Oh, really? Well, that's probably because Bezos doesn't like him, and also I think he owns the what does he own the Washington? He owns the Washington, the Washington Post, Post. Yeah. which that's is Washington a, Post. which yeah. is a traditionally a anti-Trump paper. So of course he's going to squash it, you know. So uh, ten, that's ten billion with a B. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ray, are you? Did you have your hand up? Uh, uh yeah, I I still didn't understand why um. Uh, the African Americans don't like Buttigieg, and I, I'm making no judgment. Okay, well, we have I two African Americans here. That's me. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Todd is here, and Charlie's here. Maybe they can both answer that question. Yes, Todd. Huh? If you want, I can answer it. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Well, um, the reason why I didn't like him was that whole entire cop situation thing that happened in the state. That's one of the parts, and um, another part was. Um, he had a little small town hall with a couple of African American people, as you would say. Mm-hmm. And um, he told the lady pretty much, "I don't want, you, I, don't, I don't, I didn't ask you for your vote." It was the way he did that. Yeah. He kind of put me the wrong way. Now I can't speak for all the other brothers on the show or the panel or anything like that. I can speak for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, um, just when he got upset. When people pushed him the wrong way, the way he attacked back. Okay. That's why I did my job. How about you, Charlie? How do you feel about it? Yeah, I, the whole situation where he fired the first black police chief in the city immediately after taking office with no reason, just that his donors didn't like that there was a black police chief Mm-hmm. Right there, that's enough for me not to like it. How do how do you guys feel about about Bloomberg's uh, with his stop and frisk, which he has now said he it was a bad idea on his part. 
Uh, wait a minute. You because aren't you aren't exactly you aren't black, was, Phil. I'll exactly get to you in a second. I want. It was it was the same. Wait a minute. Yep. Wait. Uh, let me let me let me let me ask uh, uh, Todd and and Charlie. What do you think about that? I don't like it at all. Never did. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he did take stop and frisk and lower it to about five percent of 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 the of, at the at the end of his term. In other words, he felt that. Okay, let me say what, what he says, and he might not have been completely wrong, but not completely right. He said that the biggest part of crime in the city was happening in black communities, and it was because of guns. And he felt that a stop and frisk would lower that, and in fact, it did. Uh, he said, but looking back at it, there were other choices I could have made, and that was not one of them. You know, so what, what do you think about him having said that? I mean, let's face it, Harlem was a pretty dangerous, was probably the most dangerous neighborhood. That and uh, uh, actually uh, uh, down around the East Village, there was an area in there uh, called, uh, what, do, what do we call it? They had a name for it. Hell's Kitchen? No, no, Hell's Kitchen was uptown. Uh, um, at the ABCs? Well, the, yeah, Alphabet City. Yeah. Oh, that's what that yeah. is. Yeah, right? Alphabet oh. City. Yes, Todd. Well, I mean, that uh, search and frisk was real rough on everybody that was African American in New York that was young. Yeah. I wasn't doing it at 50 year old people. I, I was born and raised in the Bronx. I lived there for a very long time. That was horrible. Mm. I've been trying to go to work or something to try to go to my girl's house or something. I'm trying to have a good time. I just got my check. I'm relaxing. I'm having a good day. Yeah. I'm blessing the Lord. And all of a sudden, two officers just going to slam me up against the junk and not yeah. say a word to me, but start searching through my crotch, my ass, my pocket, and shit like that? Hell no. Nah. No. Yeah, no, I I, like I, I, I don't blame you. And there are people, I black people, who have, have been saying uh, on television uh, about that, that it was very terrorizing to the black yeah. community, you know, uh, and it was it was allowing you see if you had allowed stop and frisk uh, with a police department that in and of itself wasn't racist, then I'd mm -hmm. say okay well maybe you're trying to stop the problem. But you had a racist police department who you know I mean why didn't they there are there white people who lived up in those areas why didn't they stop and frisk white people they had That's guns true. too you know. But, I mean, yeah. he did a, say he, he apologized for it, and he said he was wrong for doing it. Now, whether he's doing that so he can get elected or not, and, it, you know, it, it, but it was... Uh, how about you, Charlie? How do you feel about the, the Bloomberg? Oh, I'm, I'm with Todd. I, I'm pissed off that, that he did it for so many years. Yep. And just apologizing for it now that he's running for president, I mean, I gotta... It's going to take more than that for me to... Get past it. Phil, you you were a cop. Uh, wh wh how do you feel about stop and frisk? Oh shit! I think <laughs> well, let let, let let Phil talk about it. Well, you let know. him finish. I, I think well, I, one, one thing to interject. What? Phil, before you go, two things. One, in Manila, you get stopped and frisked every time you go into a building. That's and one of the two. My question would be. If, if you ask me if I if I want to be stopped and frisked, I'd say no. But if you tell me it will save a life, you could save a life, I'd absolutely do it. Well, this is not vanilla. And, uh, you know, in this country, we, we have something called probable cause. And it may make it tougher on the cops and it may make it tougher to stop crime. But, uh, you know, unless you have probable cause to search somebody, uh, I don't think you should. And, uh, you know, you just have to keep your eyes out. It's harder to, to, to watch and, and, and look and observe. But, uh, you know, the bottom line is uh, people got rights. And, uh, you know, uh, you, just approaching somebody because of the way they look mm -hmm. or uh, the, the way they act or the way they wear their pants, uh, I don't think is good enough. No. Uh, very good, Phil. Thank you. you know, yeah. I, we didn't expect that out of you, but that, that was good. 
you know. I also, can I say one thing about that? Uh, yes, Buttigieg? yes, yes, right. I, al I also heard him uh, early in his career where he was at a meeting placating the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah. Did you hear about that? I, there's, a, I, there's a tape of it. I seem to remember it, and what I heard, I didn't interpret that way. There was some, some reason okay. I felt that it didn't ring true. Okay. Yeah, I, I doubt he. I think he was just. I didn't think he knew what he was doing. It seemed he's kind of just floundering around. Yeah. He, it seemed like he was just trying to get his name out there or something. I don't think he really thought much about it. Yeah. But uh, I appreciate you, you, both of you guys, telling me how you feel about it because I didn't. I didn't yeah. understand what the situation was. At, let's ask Tony but, about stop and frisk because he lives in Queens. You know, that'd probably be one area they were doing. They were doing a lot, most of their stop and frisking here in Harlem, you know. I mean, I didn't follow it that closely, but, I mean, I guess it all depends because, like, say in the South Bronx, I mean, if you lived there in the 70s, it had to be, I mean, it had to be really rough. So the cops probably had a hard job, too, because what it's almost like they were burning buildings every day. You had gangs running through the city in the Bronx. It was, it was... My mother's calling. My hold on a second. We achieve <laughs> sensitivity training. Well, this is sounding like this is sounding like uh, like uh, like uh, what was that? Uh, King of comedy. I'm <laughs> I'm talking to somebody, mom. I'm doing my comedy <laughs> act, mom. But you know, I don't know because it's a tricky it's a tricky situation because I understand they're probably going to profile people, and unless they do have a solid cause, I can see yeah. But then I also feel bad for the innocent people that are living in those type of areas because they're probably living in such fear. Can you imagine living in the South Bronx in the early seventies by by Fort Apache? Well, I know I, I, I well I know I know people who lived here at that time because they lived in this apartment house, and they said it was not pleasant. You know, this apartment house was famous for having been the apartment house in New Jack City. Uh, mm -hmm. that was uh, taken over by a bunch of gangsters to make crack and to sell crack out of. And the fact of the matter was that's exactly what this apartment house was when they were filming it here. Uh, and uh, it, it, this was a very dangerous neighborhood, and there were a lot of non-dangerous people living here, a lot of good people who lived here because, quite frankly, this was the most inexpensive uh, neighborhood to live in. Uh, and it was terrible what was going on here, criminally. And so the question is, and I say this to you, Todd uh, uh, and Charlie, if in fact Stop and Frisk also wound up protecting uh, uh, the, the black populace of these neighborhoods, especially the older people, uh, would it have some worth? I mean, is... How do you how do you how do you stop the danger to those people, especially in what was at that time a very dangerous neighborhood? Well, terrorizing them isn't a way to do it. Okay, I uh, you know you totally agree with you. Yes, uh, Todd. Um, and uh, what I seen with uh, uh, that situation, like you asked my man over there, mm -hmm. if he uh, dealt with it in Queens. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the 70s. So he never had to deal with it like me and my man did. Yeah. See yeah. what I'm saying? We all had to deal with it as color. They didn't go after Jewish people, Italian, or uh, uh, the, 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 the white person or the Caucasian person that was a male, a young person, or a female. They went after people of color. That's the only ones they went after. Ask anybody on the panel... From New York, that's still there. Yeah. If they ever got stopped for stop and frisk, the only people that are gonna say that are two African Americans on your panel. I never got stopped for stop and frisk. No, but I did. <laughs> I did. I will have to I say, in the still, in the go, come on, in, in my early days here in New York, okay, living in Manhattan, okay, in the Lower Manhattan, uh, living in the Village, uh, I had long hair down to here. I was stopped by cops for that. Oh, okay. You know, I was stopped were, for cops. But what? Because you were a hippie, sir. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, then, yeah, but the, again, were, again, that was a that was a form of profiling. You know, correct. 
So I know what profiling's all about. It's just that uh, as I got older and the hair got cut, I never had that problem again. Uh, I even was able to ca get cabs when I put my hand up, too. I couldn't get a cab because I had long hair. Um, and, you know, you still can't get a cab here in Harlem. Uh, yes, uh, I Tony. Say, I got, something happened to me once, Alex. Listen to this. My mom used to work in me, uh, A&S. It was on Queens Boulevard. And the movie theater at the Elmwood was across the street. So I used to always go there with a couple of my friends. And I used to say, you know, I had to be about 14 at the time. I didn't have a job. Mm -hmm. I probably had a paper out, but I, just, I used to go in there. We used to, and I went upstairs to where she worked in house, and I noticed somebody was following us. I said, "This guy, it was plain clothes." Yeah. So then he came up to me and my friends. He goes, "What are you doing?" He says, "You got to get out of here if you're not buying anything." I'm going to see my mother, and he followed me to my mother's department. He says, "Is this your son?" She says, "Yeah." I was asking my mom for a couple of bucks to go see a movie, and she says, "Yeah." So that I actually, you know, it was like security. It wasn't a cop, but. I mean, I kind of yeah. felt like, is this guy for real? Like, what do you? You can't, you can't throw me out. Wait, 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 I wait. buy anything. But he was actually following us around the store. Todd, he thought we were going to buy steel. Todd, what are you oh, laughing oh, about? Oh. Todd's laughing. That's not stop and frisk. That's not stop and frisk. He's right. But he wanted to no, But he wanted to throw me out, though. To everybody. That's Wait. Tony yeah. the pickpocket. Did I see Ray with his hand up? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to say I got I got profiled once, and I'm not going to say it's the equivalent, but I can have a taste of it. I was like uh, 18 years old, and I was wearing a cowboy hat in Palo Alto, and I was driving my mom's Chevy Caprice, yeah, the 400 engine and everything, and I got pulled over for no reason. Oh yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> the guy came up to me. He was afraid to come up to the window. I had like this really fancy cowboy hat on for some mm -hmm. stupid ass reason. And then there was another cop right there with her hand on her gun, ready to pull it out, man. I was scared to death. I thought you were I, a mafia guy. What? Yeah, kind of mafia. Yeah, I look. I don't know what the hell they thought I was, but <laughs> and it was because of the stupid hat. But um, yeah, I mean, I could just only imagine if that happened to you every day, or you're afraid yeah, this that is going to happen. Shitty. Well, that I would suck. I kind of had. It I mean, that would really suck. Yeah, I kind of had reverse I, race. I had it done to me when they, they would say the bald guy. I had two or three times where they would come after me in the crowd. And I said, the bald guy did it, the bald guy. And it'd be like, it wasn't me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the Warriors did it. The Warriors. Yeah, they yeah. Shot yeah. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of racism against bald-headed people, right? Yeah. Uh, no, but I, I'll tell you, I mean, I, I, I talked about this before, the reverse racism that happened to me at Costco a couple of weeks ago where I was oh, yeah, going right. around and I accidentally tapped somebody's cart in front of me. Just tapped it. I didn't even hit it hard. I just tapped it. And I moved myself out of the way and I kept going. And the guy yells at me and says, hey. And I turned around. It's a black guy. And he said, you didn't apologize. And I'm going, well, what's your problem? You know, I just, ta I just tapped you. And he goes, you're racist. That's not nice. <laughs> and I thought to myself, boy, that's going to be big news to George Wallace that tapping somebody's <laughs> cart is racism. You know, you should have told him. I don't like black people and white people. What do you what think, Todd? Like, yeah, was I was I a racist yeah. for tapping his right cart? Todd, was yeah. I a racist yeah. for tapping his cart? I mean, no, no, you wasn't racist, sir. That individual had an attitude problem. He probably got stopped and frisked too much, or he has a mental problem. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't all of us. Don't, don't, hey, look, look, hey, hold on. Don't lump all us together. No, Never no, I'm not saying Never that. that. I'm just saying. I said I was, saying. I just used that as an example where I was racially profiled. You but. was racially profiled by not a cop about a cart. That got <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. In a store. <laughs> exactly. Did you tap a white guy's cart so you'd give me equal time? Actually, I did tap a woman's cart, the white woman's cart, the other day. And Sexist and racist. And, 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 and it was a little harder than the tap that I had tapped his, so I apologized. But, uh, 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 yeah, but, you know, I mean, um, um, it, it, 
I just wish we'd all get along. Jeez almighty. I just, <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I feel, Who's hmm? that, Rodney uh, King? I feel like yeah, Rodney you know, King. Why can't we all get along? You, know? you guys mentioned the South Bronx, and you said that you know it was just uh, the 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 white cops going after the the black citizens, and uh, you know my dad uh, was actually a volunteer fireman in in Engine eighty two in the South Bronx, which had the most runs of any of any engine company in the country, and uh, what they used to do in the burned out buildings is they pull false alarms. And the truck would show up, and then they'd throw rocks or they'd shoot at the firemen. And uh, you know, this this is what they you know this is what they did for sport. It, it wasn't a, a, a black white thing. It was just uh, they're bored. They got nothing to do. Their their standard of living was so low in the South Bronx. Uh, they they messed with the firemen, and the firemen weren't there to do anything except help them. The fire, I remember that. Yeah. The firemen are pretty, you know, I mean, I won't say they aren't racist, but they certainly, if you're black and you got a fire, they'll put out your fire. Okay. Well, there was a book uh, and, and, many, uh, and many YouTube videos on Dennis Smith, who was, uh, uh, he, he, wrote a, he wrote a book, Report from Engine 82. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, a helmet just like this one was on the cover, mm -hmm. but this was dad's. Yeah, and uh, you know, if if you listen to that, you'll get a really good idea of what was going on in the South Bronx in the late '60s mm -hmm. and early '70s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin's been very quiet. Kevin, you you got any thoughts about this? No, I had a couple questions earlier, but they kind of got answered as we were going along. So yeah, no. I mean, what were the I was threw up my hand, but they were answered as we went along. Yeah, what was what were the what was the question? Oh, they got answered. It was pretty much I was I was asking about the Buttigieg thing and then about uh, you know the 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 uh, Bloomberg thing. Yeah. Oh, let me see here. We got uh, we got. Uh, uh, let me see here. Eight, uh, nine. I need to number yeah. nine. Uh, we got we we just have. Uh, uh, what's his name? Full house. We, 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 we have a woman. Hold on a second. I got to do it first. Should be a full house. Yeah. Yeah. Full house. Uh, yeah. Uh, Let's see, what, what name, what, 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 Jason, what name do you use? 3 a.m.? 3 a.m., yep. Okay, there we go. I uh, saw there was nine, so I figured I'd make it a full house. Okay, and would that make it a full house? Is that a full house, Phil? Yeah. That is technically a full house, it, so. What, uh, technically, it is a full house. It is yeah, a full a, house. That's ten of us, yeah. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, ta-da, there we go, it's a full house. Nice and it's to, not a nice Friday thing. night. You've been hearing this discussion, Jason. Any <laughs> thoughts about it? You happen to be of the, shall we say, what? Me, uh, are you Mexican? Is it? Stop yeah. it. Huh? <laughs> yes. Yes. You 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 are of the Mexican persuasion. Uh, yeah. what, what do you think about any of this? Have you ever been stopped and frisked? No, I've I've actually I've always had a real good relationship with cops, but you know I've you know it's I, it's like when I was a kid I had that talk you know you do what you're told to do and it's yes sir no sir may I do this sir may I do this yeah. you know and th now I even take it more to the extreme I hurry up I get all my crap ready I put it on the dash and mm -hmm. I put my hands on the steering wheel yeah <laughs> Todd Turn the Todd on. yeah Todd, yeah. Todd and Charlie oh, you tell God. tell them what the talk is Say what, what we're talking about. Tell them what the talk is that we're talking about. I I, it, I I had to talk with my son, and my dad had to talk with me. He tell you how how to say not to get shot by a cop when you get stopped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think every parent should have I that talk it. with their cop with their kid. Well, every 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 everybody should probably in this day and age. But uh, uh, black kids were told by their parents, you know, if a cop. Stops you. Don't sass them. Don't do this. Yes, sir. No, sir. Whatever they want, just get out of there alive. Don't I you saw talk? Is there talk that? What? What? What did you say, Todd? Sorry about that. The talk was a little different for us, the other people, because we never tried to sass the cops per se. But what the problem always happened was, even if it was nice and respectful, would still get a nightstick or beat up or thrown in the back of the patrol car. Yeah. My dad's a retired police officer from New York. 
So when that shit happened to me, I'm talking with motherfucking experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing but experience. Didn't do nothing wrong. Didn't have no long hair. Mm -hmm. Didn't have no pants sagging. I had my briefcase because I was a nerd when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at me now. That's probably. See what, see what that's, to me? I would say that was a good reason. Yeah, I been at Yale and Harvard. See what the motherfuckers did to me, right? Yeah. I'm truck driving. I look ghetto as hell and fuzzy as whatever. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah, but I'm saying that you and, you probably had a worse chance of getting beaten up by the neighbors in the neighborhood for having the briefcase than anything yeah. else. Oh yeah. Well, I got jumped. I got jumped. I got jumped in the Bronx. Yeah. On the way to high school, okay, um, and I'm a pretty big guy, so I got jumped by 15 or 20 on the way to school, Yeah. on the way to the lunch truck, on the way home, every day, yeah. for three years. Wow. Every day. Wow. And yeah. I never broke my nose, neither. Every day. I, You know something? I used Seemed to... Seemed like you learned to take a different route, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this... uh, there was no different route when you came out of a Co-op City building. And yeah. your school was right up the road, yeah. walking distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe it or not, and I don't want to say that I, uh, me too, you know. But when I was growing up, I was the only Jew in a all Catholic neighborhood, and I got it pretty bad too, you know, mm -hmm. just because I was a Maybe Jew, I, or as they referred to me, the, the, your the, your people killed Christ. That was the uh, I was a Christ killer. <laughs> And, How uh, many older Italians heard that from the from priests or uh, or not just the kids around the neighborhood, but was it being promulgated by? Uh, uh, I think, by if Catholic I remember correctly, Israel. the Catholic Church was actually saying to their kids who were going to you know catechism after school uh, that the Jews killed Christ. That was pretty yeah. much the, the the thing they kept saying. So you, we had to have a villain, and they picked this. Yeah, well. You know. Couldn't be the Joker or anybody else, you know. God forbid they got the story wrong. Right, but I mean, uh, it, yeah, but I mean, I, 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 I got that a lot, you know. Um, uh, and I asked my father once, you know, why, why are they picking on us? And he said, you know, they just do. That's it, you know. Uh, and and uh, just understand that they don't know better. He was very good about it. You know. Jason's, Jason's got yeah. Hey, so I did want to say, didn't technically though the Jews actually did kill Christ because didn't Pontius Pilate give them a choice to release somebody no. and they didn't choose Jesus? Well, no, they, I killed them. No, I, <laughs> no, the Romans killed them. the Roman. The Romans physically killed Christ. You know, but the Jews voted to have. Them well, killed. I mean, it was a it, it, it was Messiah idol. And they uh, <laughs> and they got, took a vote. He got kicked off the island. <laughs> he he kicked. He got, he was survivor. Day. Yeah. He was killed Christ. <laughs> we need thirty crucifixions. But you know something? Okay. When you say they they asked uh, who they were going to um, who they were going to spare, who did they spare? Because I there, was, uh, did the I Romans think there was a story like it was a murder or somebody. Well, uh, yeah, but who knows what's true somebody anyway? Accused of murder. <laughs> well, I'm saying this is in their their theology. Yeah. yeah, but the Romans did it. I mean, yeah, there's just no question. Like, well, the hands were all over everything. You know, let's face it. I, I my my answer to the kids were yes, we did, and if he comes back, we'll do it again. <laughs> That's what I used to tell them, and then they beat the crap out of me. <laughs> you yeah. might as well get a good shot at him before everything. Done. That's what you got to do. Well, they should be glad you right. killed Christ. <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't be saved. Right. Yeah. It, uh, uh, Todd, it sounds to me like you you grew up in a pretty in a pretty good household in in the Bronx, and with parents who really, you know, were hands on. Where am in I, the am I right or am I wrong? Real hands on. <laughs> like Fordham Road or Lots of hands. Eighth Avenue. I was uh, Gun Hill, Park City, East Tremont. I was in that area for a little while, mm -hmm. and then we were moved up to Mount Vernon. Oh. And then uh, we moved back from Mount Vernon because we couldn't really afford all that bullshit. We went back to the ghetto in the Bronx, and I went to school way up. So I had to get up like 4 o'clock in the morning to go to another school because uh, my parents got tired of uh, me fighting everybody every day because I wasn't learning anything. Yeah. I was fighting all the time. Yeah. I was fighting because the whole thing started when I asked one question or I answered the question that the teacher asked, 
that another smart guy with his girlfriend, Italian dude, couldn't answer. I answered, and I was the prior, and it was over since that. Oh, oh, you mean the Italians were out to get you because you answered the question? Everybody was back in my day. Yeah, the Italians. Boy, yeah, that would be a terrible penalty on Jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah, was, I mean, yeah. what that is? was around the time when they chased the brother up for, to walk into the white girl home, mm. and it was a friend yeah. of his school, and they beat him to death with the bats in the Bronx. That was around the time I went to school. Wow. So I didn't have it just from the people that were black in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I got it from everybody else that was outside or came into my neighborhood. Yes, How Phil. old are you, Blanco? What? Say again? I just want to say, I'm going to hang up now. I got to go. Sorry. Oh. Oh, it's the end of the full house. It, it's the end of the full house. <laughs> well, I'll try to come back if I can. Okay. okay. Well, we will uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get rid of you. And then we got to do this. And then we got to put somebody in. We got to put Jason in the number, what what spot was he in? Okay, he was oh, in the number four number spot. One. No, I got to put you in the number four <laughs> spot, uh, uh, number Jason. Four. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Wait a minute, me. hold on a second. Three a.m. There we go. There we go. I think well, that damn, should do all it. The girls in the background in the store. Where's he at? What? <laughs> <laughs> what is that down there? The ball dude. I'm watching all these Asian women walking around his ass. He's just eating and chilling. He's, he's, he's eating. He's he's not in the United States. Tell him where you are. Uh, 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 Bree. 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 Oh, Bree. Okay. Bree's in um. Koala. What the hell? Koala yeah, Lumpur. Okay. I'm gonna have to come visit him. I see all that shit in the background. <laughs> <laughs> what? what, 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 what I'm coming. Can I ask Tony what movie the line is from? I'm Benny Blanco from the Bronx. Oh, that's uh. Oh, that's with Al Pacino and Sean Penn. Uh, Carlitos way. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Carlitos. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, so oh, I asked uh, Adi uh, Benny Blanco. Uh, He's from I, the Bronx. I, I guess I don't. Have, I guess I shouldn't what? ask you guys what you thought of the Oscars because you probably. I was. I couldn't believe that one best picture and foreign film. I was going to ask you that. I don't know when twice. There was something wrong with it winning both. Yeah. Yeah. There was something wrong I got there. confused. I had to look up. How do they get nominated twice? Because I figured 1917, like you said, it was going to win. When I heard that, I said, did they win already? Yeah. I was all confused. I'll watch it when they translate well, it. Well, I'll tell you something. We This weekend, we rewatched uh, Jojo Rabbit. And if you haven't seen Jojo Rabbit, really? it's a wonderful really film. It is, it is, it, it's the hardest hat trick to pull off in movies. Uh, comedy. Uh, that's also a tragedy, uh, and 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 just balances it all so well. I mean, it's a great it's a great picture. You would like it. It's very funny, um, but not funny. It's about and it and it has as one of the funnier characters in the picture Adolf Hitler. So, yeah, I see them in the Yeah. Now our uh, 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 our uh, our good friend uh, from Kuala Lumpur. Is uh, is on the move now. Yeah. There we go. He's walking down the streets of Kuala Lumpur, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, pick me up at the airport. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> there we I go. ain't joking. Yeah, and uh, there are uh, there are a lot of Asian, hot Asian women there. Good. Good. That's, oh, well, I ain't coming did. back to the U.S. Then. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, uh, but uh, no, it, uh, I just I just felt I felt that to begin with, uh, there's this uh, actress Christine Olivio, uh, I think it's how it's pronounced, who was the star of Harriet. Which again, if you haven't seen Harriet, that's another movie you shouldn't avoid. It's a great film, and her performance was so outstanding that anybody that could say that Renee Zellweger playing Judy top that performance is beyond she, me she looked good I, I I don't know what people are talking about bad uh, cosmetic surgery for Renee Zellweger but she she, she always looks like she's sucking on a persimmon <laughs> she, she <looks laughs> you know nice mm. and waist. yeah she, her eyes look weird if you yeah look at her. Well, she maybe, looks like she's weird, had so many facelifts that if she gets one more she's gonna have a beard and 
You know who it looked pretty good was Jane Fonda, you know, for, for her. Oh, yeah. Jane, Jane Fonda for, yeah, no, she looks great. Well, but um, You're a Republican, Phil. You can't think she looks good. Well, you know, that was a long time ago, and, you know, she looked good. <laughs> yeah, she looked really good. But anyway, uh, what I'm saying is if you if you were to check out the two performances and compare one against the other, uh, 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 Revo, is it pronounced a Revo? It's, I'm trying to remember how it's pronounced, her last name, uh, who was in Harriet, it so outshines her in that film that it's amazing. And, you know... She couldn't even win for best song, which was also better than Elton John's piece of shit. Oh, I was like, he won. Oh, wait a minute. We just are going to get a, uh, we can't let advertisers advertise on your show because you just said a dirty word. Oh, you swore. Listen, I got to tell you something. This is going to, this is a. So you got to go back to FM radio no, days. No, this is going to, this is going to really make you laugh. So the other day, they put a strike against, you know, I post two versions of my show. One is the one that I'm recording right now as I'm doing it, okay? And the other one is the one that YouTube records while I'm doing it. And so both of them go up. One of them got a strike against them. The other one didn't. Both of them are absolutely identical shows. <laughs> Now, to make things worse, today I decided, well, for the hell of it, for joke, for, for laughs, I had like some old raw footage from Ibiza in 1993. So I glued them all together in about, it plays for about two and a half hours. And I put it up as Ibiza 93 raw footage, okay? There is nothing on there. Even at the, the nude beach, there isn't even any nudity. I think there's one second of nudity, I, uh, if there is that. Okay, and it's on a beach in Ibiza where people are just lying in the sun. They're not playing with their vaginas or whatever. Uh, and they put a strike against that. They said it's not suitable for most advertisers, and I'm going. Um, Alex, you can't say vagina. You have to say genitalia. Yeah. Okay. But but <laughs> and that one I don't get because I purposely put it up number for two reasons. Number one, I found out that the thing I had done about a beef in which I do play music and it it can't be monetized got something like almost six thousand views. So I figured I'd put up this footage with a beef, and people would go look for a beef and find that. And I would get uh, uh, a lot of views, and we'd make some money off of it, right? Can you no. put up your, your your thing from the uh, uh, the race uh, that you got the Emmy for? Uh, I, I in, uh, probably not. I don't know if there's music in there. I don't know. But the point is that this would have gotten more people watching. They put a strike against it for what? There was nothing in there that could. It was. It's so benign. It's ridiculous. They're, they're just looking for any little reason to find legally that they cannot pay you for your yeah. advertisement. Well, how much? Uh, right? that's, that's the whole yeah. goal of it. So you you can't even take it personal. You gotta look at that contract, read every single word, and know what you can say, what you can't say, and yeah. sure they're right. Yeah. How much? Strikes can you get before you're it, out? It's no Infinite. no. These weren't strikes that count against you. This is oh. just we can't we can't monetize it because certain advertisers, although certain we'll advertisers, there, though. certain advertisers say it's okay, and I found out in those things that they struck that there are commercials running before them. Because yeah. they're, I'm telling you, that's all they're looking for. They'll still play the commercial. They'll take the winnings. It's just if you break that contract any one way bit about it by saying a curse word or anything like that, hmm. boom. Well, they got to pay me. Nope. Yes, they do. You broke the contract. No, no. If they run a commercial and I'm a... No, I'm, you did a swear word. No, that is not... And no, so they, no. It says they can't run the commercials from most sponsors. So obviously the sponsors that are advertising, it's okay with them if you say those kind of things. What yeah. about the ones that advertise for gambling and, and things like that? Uh, don't they? Do they care uh, that there's a, a swear word in there? A swear word and where? I mean, and, no, I'm and, sure I'm sure certain advertisers go, we don't care, you know, and there and there's some advertising. If you watch this Ibiza thing, you will see some advertising before it. 
Uh, I, I saw a video uh, on this financial guy that was talking about how he made over a million dollars last year. Uh, and uh, he did it. He says you could do it with sponsors. You do it with, uh, it depends on your content. He says financial content is worth more to an advertiser than other kinds of content. So depending on the content, you can make Well, more there are two ways you can make content. You can, you can have them run these commercials beforehand, and then if you get enough of them and enough people watching them, you will get some money for those. Also, you could have an, I could have an advertiser in the middle of this show, and I could say, you know, buy... No, word from our sponsor. Buy A&W Root Beer and, and, uh, and hold, uh, put up a logo and everything. And and they can't they won't stop me from doing that. So that's some another and now all that money would go to me. Yeah, some of these advertisers have I mean uh, videos have tons of uh, advertisements before, <laughs> during, and after. Well, if I noticed that the same commercials were running over and over again at the beginning of these shows, I would then name them and say, "Don't buy the product." Okay, you know? Phil, when did you start saying advertisements? At what age? <laughs> It's an advertisement. <laughs> well, it's it, like vegetable. The, it's advertisement, but <laughs> I, I say advertisement too. Well, you know what it is? How, is it a New no, York thing? It's, it, no, it's California. It's California. It's the difference between oh. in a New York, they say roof, yeah, and in New California, we say roof. <laughs> okay? I mean, I, I never, know the town. My dog says bark. I know. <laughs> What's what? Uh, I have a talking dog here. Yeah. Well, who, who? What's on top of a house? Rough. Okay. Um, well, how does sandpaper feel? Rough. Uh, who was the greatest baseball player of all time? Rough. Rough. Yeah. And then and the, bar the bartender throws lane. them both out of this out of the place, and as they're landing on the ground outside the bar, the dog looks at the guy and goes, "What was it, DiMaggio?" That's the joke. Okay. Uh, Jason calls soda pop, right? Because you're from Detroit. Yep. Pop there? I call it a Fago. No. We yeah, call pop. it pop in Chicago too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pop you know what West. we call sperm on the on the on this program? Spish. Sperm. Because I otherwise I don't want to get a strike the against on me. Shirt. Huh? I said, you call it the stain on Phil's shirt. The stain, the stain, no, you don't have a stain on your shirt, Phil. Hey, thanks, everybody. Hey, Jason, you were here when the when, on a different night than you normally are. Yeah, I got tomorrow off. I got to go to the dentist. Yeah, oh, you got to go to the dentist, eh? Okay. And, uh, you know, I also want to thank, um, uh, let me see here. Oops, some people are uh, getting out because we have, uh, well, uh, 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 thanks to everybody, including our friend Kuala Lumpur and Kevin, who didn't have much to say tonight, but great having you here. Uh, Charlie Wallace, great having you here. Jason, of course, your wife has let you out for the night, or she might not even be home. Oh, she's asleep. I see. Okay. And, uh, of course, uh, our, our Tony, our good friend Tony, and Jeff, and and uh, uh, Tom uh, Moore. Uh Tom, is the first name Tom? Uh, Todd. 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 Todd Moore. I'm an old man, Todd. Excuse Jeez. me. You were great tonight, by the way. Great having you here. Also great having. Thank the, you for having me. Guys. Also great having the other Negro here because uh, they. Be, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, there was uh, a time I when I. The load of you, man. <laughs> what? Todd will go after you. Now, Last time it was me and undercover brother. Hey, hey, and and <laughs> Phil Meyer. Hey, you can just call me Jew Boy. Okay, how's that? I'll anyway. never call you that. I know exactly where you live. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, just terrific. Anyway. New uh, Jack City building, bro. What? New Jack City building, sir. Looking yes, right I do. Your yes, I do. And, hey, I, and I have to go out to the kitchen now and make some crack. Okay. Hey, hey, they need that. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. Every, everybody, wave goodbye. Okay. It'd be a good idea if you did, and uh, I'll uh, I'll wave goodbye too. Okay. How's that? All right. Okay. There we go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. That was. I really enjoyed that tonight. Now you see, that's the way you do a show, and you act on a show that makes me feel happy. 
and now I'm walking away from here, and I will say to myself, wow, that was a good show. Anyway, hey, listen, I thank you all for listening and watching the program. Uh, there were a little less watching it than listening it tonight. Tonight, there were a lot of people listening. Um, we'll see you again tomorrow night, right here. Uh, right at, well, there's nobody on before me, except for the sports show, which goes on at 8.30. I'll see you same time, same station, in life, in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.